Hello, this is your instructor, Mr. Ellsworth, and today we're going to work on um, solving some problems. So uh, let's get started. So in the triangle ABC, D is the midpoint of uh, line segment AB, and E is the midpoint of line segment AC. If BC is equal to 7x plus 1, and DE equals 4x minus 2, find x and calculate the length of BC and DE. There's a, a theorem which states that if a line segment joins the midpoint of two sides of a triangle, the segment is parallel to the third side, and its length is one-half the length of the third side. So DE is just such a line segment, and therefore its length equals one-half the length of BC. So to solve uh, for X, we set DE equal to one-half BC. Substituting the equations in for the line segments, we get 4x minus 2 is equal to 1 half 7x plus 1. And then we can um, algebraically solve for this. Let's multiply both sides by 2 to get rid of the fraction. Multiply this through. And now we want to solve for x. So let's subtract 7x from both sides. So we have 8x minus 7x minus 4 is equal to 1 combined. So 8x minus 7x is just x minus 4 equals 1. Add 4 to both sides. And we get a solution, x equals 5. Now, <clears throat> by substituting the length of DE in DE equals 4x minus 2. So 
substituting the 5 in for x. And so we get DE is equal to 18. And the line segment BC um, is equal to 7x plus 1, substituting uh, 5n. So that's going to be 35 plus 1. So BC is equal to 36. And indeed, you can see that DE is half the length of uh, BC. Okay, well, let's uh, work on another problem. Um, let's take a, a right triangle that has a length of, one of its legs has a length of 6 and the other has a length of 8 inches. Um, and then CD, the line segment CD bisects the right angle. Find the length of uh, line segment AD and line segment DB. Okay, let's uh, write that down. Okay, draw our picture. Uh, one leg is eight, the other leg is six. And then what we want to find is We want to find uh, the length of AD and DB. So that's this part here, AD and DB. So, um, the trick is we have to somehow relate the unknown segment lengths to the given data to derive um, the required results. Now, 
you'll remember that a bisector of one angle of a triangle divides the opposite side so that the length of its segments are proportional uh, to the lengths of the adjacent sides. So we can write the ratio like this is equal to AD over DB like that. And we know that um, 8 over 8 would be equivalent to dB over dB uh, is always true. And so we can add this into the equation, in the equi uh, proportion, uh, like this. So we have 6 plus 8. over 8 AD plus DB over DB, just like this. So effectively, we just added 8 to our equation. And, and the reason we're doing this is, look at this, we have AD, and we have DB. And so we can take advantage of the uh, Pythagorean theorem uh, to help us uh, find these lengths. So let's write this down. AD plus DB equals a, B. Okay? And that's the hypotenuse of the right triangle. Uh, and so we know that A squared plus B squared equals C squared, um, the Pythagorean theorem. So we have 6 squared plus 8 squared is equal to C squared. Uh, so that's 36 plus 64. equals c squared, so we have 100 equals c squared. Um, uh, thus, if we take the square root of both sides, uh, c is equal to 10, right? Uh, and that's the length a, b. Uh, let me get a new page here. So, uh, let's write that down. a, b is equal to 10. And so we can substitute that uh, in like this. So we have our equation 6 plus 8 over 8 uh, is equal to AD uh, plus DB over DB, right? So that uh, adds together that's 14 over 8 equals... You know, and that's the same as AB, right? AD plus DB is the same as AB. Right? AD plus DB is the same as AB. Um, so we can substitute 10 in for there. So we have 14 over 8 equals 10 over dB. And then we can cross multiply uh, to get our solution. So we'll have 14 times dB is equal to 8 times 10. So dB is equal to 80 over 14 and we can simplify that down to the fraction 40 over 7. Now to find AD um, AD is equal to 
AB minus DB, right? Uh, and AB is 10 minus um, 40 over 7. Convert that into a fraction. Um, if we convert 10 into a fraction, we're going to have 70 over 7 minus 40 over 7. And so AD is equal to 30 over 7. So, so this is going to be. 30 over 7, and that's in inches. This is over 40 over 7, and that's inches. Um, as a real number, um, that would be um, 4 and 2 sevenths inches, right? And here, uh, let's see, 6 times 7, that's too big, so 5 and five-sevenths inches. Okay, so um, we don't want to get out of here without doing at least one proof. So uh, let's work on a proof. Uh, and um, uh, let's do a parallelogram. This. So in um, parallelogram A, B, C, D, let's make uh, D, E perpendicular to A, B. And the line segment uh, BF uh, perpendicular uh, to DC. And then let's prove the altitudes. Uh, DE congruent to BF. So the way we have to do this um, to prove that uh, DE is congruent to BF, the best approach would be to prove that the triangles, which have uh, 
line segment DE and BF as corresponding parts are congruent. Therefore, um, we want to prove that triangle AED is congruent to CFB. Uh, the method of proving congruences is best uh, for this problem is the one in which two triangles are shown to be congruent because two angles and sides opposite uh, one angle and one triangle are congruent. So um, corresponding parts of another triangle, so angle angle side is congruent. Um, in order for this to work, it's, we have to remember that the opposite sides and angles in a parallelogram are congruent. Okay, so let's write our proof. Okay, and we have AD congruent to CB. Opposite sides of a parallelogram are congruent. Angle A is congruent to angle C. Opposite angles of a parallelogram are congruent. And then we have um, uh, DE perpendicular to AB and BF perpendicular to DC. That was our givens. Now, um, if angle E and angle F are right angles, so when perpendicular lines intersect, they form right angles. So angle E and angle, uh, oh, angle E and angle F are congruent. All right. 
right angles are congruent. Thus, uh, triangle AED congruent to triangle CFB by angle angle side AAS postulate and finally DE is congruent to BF by corresponding parts of congruent triangles corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. And so that's our proof. Okay, um, that's the end of this lesson. Um, so happy math. Solve some problems and we'll have a lesson uh, next time.